My name is Ethan Zapach, and this summer I won a scholarship to attend the North American Mycological Association Appalachia Foray 2023. And I want to take you on a quick journey that conveys the wealth of knowledge I gained, the excellence of the people I met, and the beauty of the Appalachian Mountains. Quick disclaimer, my explanations will not do this trip justice, it was truly amazing. Let's start from the beginning. Despite only having one day of notice from my cry for help in a Charlotte Mushroom Facebook group, a wonderful human being named Tara picked me up from the Charlotte airport, saving me a six hour wait. Which car should I look for? How about the one with the stained glass mushroom on the rear view? Yeah, I'm in the right place. The Appalachian Mountains are ancient and lush. We arrived at Canuga and settled in. The schedule was packed. There was so much to do and at least 78 different reasons to procrastinate taking a nap. Each night we met for a recap, which featured awards for fungal finds of the day, then a keynote presentation from an expert in their respective niche. The first night featured Gary Kaufman, a revered botanist of the Appalachian region. Every night after the keynote, there was a social down by the lake. Let's start off day two with my first reason not to sleep in. We're going to look for mushrooms. I learned so much this weekend and most of that was out foraging. Everyone has their own unique information to share. Throughout this video, I won't go deeply into all the mushrooms we found on forays, but I will show off some highlights from the outings. One of my favorite genera of mushrooms in the Boletaceae, Ario boletus betula, also known as the shaggy stalked bolete. So, and reti boletus ornatopes reti boletus mm -hmm. is for reticulated, reticulated bolete. And you can see that reticulation, that fishnet goes like all the way down the stem. It is bitter as a son of a gun and it also will stain your hands yellow for- I eat these though. Oh, you, you do? Bitter. So you find them that aren't bitter. That, I well, find a ton of them near where I am that aren't bitter. See, and that's the thing. Yeah. I mean, even if you take a bite of it now, it won't be bitter. Change it with their age. That's bitter. <laughs> <laughs> to my understanding is There's, Reddy yeah. Boletus ornatopes is going to more than likely end up being yep. split up based on the fact that there are uh, yeah, collections there from further north the people eat. Um, what are those couple that you would eat raw? Oh, uh, so I will eat uh, Amanita jacksonii uh, raw in like small quantities mm -hmm. and uh, also like any of the classic porcini, so Boletus edulis okay. and, you know, related species. Very cool. And so, again, they're nice when you like slice them thin and you just put a little bit of oil on them and like the... Uh, the Caesars go really well with like a little bit of balsamic, a little bit of salt. I like to use MSG powder because I cheat at everything. And then they're just sort of a nice little finger food. And you know, these are actually from uh, my yard, uh, my mom's house. Whoa. And it's chlorophyllum olive. Oh, that's a real mushroom? Well, no, no, no. It was a mushroom I took a picture of and I have a friend who's an artist and she made it for me. That's but it's so from cool. the picture of the mushroom in my mom's yard. Wow. As much as I thought I overpacked, I quickly realized how much gear I was actually missing. Things like a bait and tackle box, voucher slips, and wax paper bags will now be part of my foraging kit, but I didn't know I needed them before this trip. Fundus and Nama made a great video together on how to properly collect mushrooms for citizen science, and I'll link that in the description. Nama had a full team of dedicated people identifying samples collected on the forays. This process would be completely impossible without properly collected and vouchered samples. I mean, without vouchers, this crab claw may accidentally get chucked in with the mushrooms. It smells like rotten meat. This is the beef bouillon bolete. It smells like rotten meat? No, no, no. Not when it gets really it old, really it's Oh, okay. It smells, meat, but right it smells now. like curried meat right now. Yeah, I think awesome. So. Can, can I take a sniff? Yeah, smell people it. People say beef bouillon or curry. Oh, wow. Does comp it ever? My yeah. compromise. <laughs> That's I hate so. that audio for sure. <laughs> Next up on my agenda is a DNA sequencing workshop led by Mandy Quark, a self-proclaimed mushroom madman with a very impressive resume. Her assistant is Kyle Cannon, one of the only people performing nanopore sequencing on fungi in North America. I put my thumb behind it and you might be able to barely see the piece in the very bottom of the tube. <laughs> Barely. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we put the extract um, in here at 80 Celsius for like 10 minutes just to kind of break up some of that DNA. And then I just ran it in a centrifuge to spin all the particles down really well. You said this can all be automated with a nice machine? With a liquid handler. Unreal. It's relatively really as easy. There's a four part series on YouTube. Um, by Secret Jacobs, and if you haven't seen it, I recommend watching it. And that's actually her protocol, and I just think it's the the best protocol that exists out there for Sanger sequencing. 
with nanopore sequencing, we're just handling it in such a larger um, amount, and then there's a lot of like indexing of primers that you have to do. So there's a lot more pipetting with um, nanopore, and it's not just because you're handling nine, you know, a significant more um, amount of mushrooms. It's because there's significant more amount of steps, um, like with indexing primers and stuff. So there's a lot of mixing of reagents and stuff. So then I'll ship it to California, and they'll give me the results back within four days. Um, and it comes in email form, and it comes in ATCs and Gs. Yes. Um, so it means nothing other than you need to put it in blast and run it and start doing that DNA analysis and the analytical end that's uh, kind of like one of the bottlenecks with sequencing as well. This baseline intro to DNA sequencing blew my mind. Although I don't have any plans to buy a mini PCR, I will be sending out mushroom samples for sequencing moving forward. Somehow it's evening already, and I was fortunate enough to meet some awesome farmers named Gabe and Emma, who brought some goodies from their farm to share. Nice machine. You wanna go check it out real quick? Yep. So it's exactly... <laughs> It's one forearm's length. Okay. Meal times were a great opportunity to interact with other 4A attendees, and I feel so blessed to have met all the great mushroom folks that I did. Tonight's keynote presentation featured Dr. Brandon Matheny on the mushrooms of the Southern Appalachians. And I've been to several other names since. Um, <laughs> Sleep in? Of course not. Let's go to the bog. Today, I'm improving at collecting and vouchering, primarily because I managed to land with one of the best in the game. This is my spot, man. You part Labrador? <laughs> <laughs> this is Alicia Milliken. I'm going to try to channel my inner Alicia yeah. Milliken and say, yes, collect <laughs> absolutely right. everything and yeah. voucher everything. Uh, she is a force of nature and we need her. <laughs> I wear a lot of hats. I am the president of the Alabama Mushroom Society. Here at NAMA, I am on the executive board as the trustee at large. I also have the honor of serving on the vouchering committee and the DNA sequencing com committee and the nominating committee. Um, and then I'm also a volunteer coordinator for the fungal diversity survey. And basically I find mushrooms, <laughs> yeah. I find mushrooms. Alicia was kind enough to share with me her process for identifying mushrooms. Okay, so these are super interesting. Okay, Whoa. so the first thing that I do is you don't want to disturb too much. So I'm looking at, is it growing from soil? Is it look growing from wood? Is it growing from leaf litter? Um, and these are clearly, I'm, I'm moving the, the leaf litter away and seeing that they are clearly growing from soil. And I want to document as much as I can. So I'm going to document before disturbing anything. And it, in the documentation, in this kind of far away photo, I'm seeing what kind of trees uh, are nearby by the leaves that are in the image. And kind of, are they growing all real, real close together? Are they kind of spread out? Is there hundreds of them? And I can kind of see there's three or four here. And then you want to dig it up. And I know from looking at these that these are beautiful, are one of the earth tongues. And an interesting thing for earth tongues is if you touch it to your lips, you can feel if it's smooth or hairy because the trico blossoms have real fine hairs on them that you can kind of pick up with your lips or under a stereoscope, which I don't have here in the woods <laughs> with me. Um, so I think these are one of the, the smooth ones, one of the, uh, not trichoglossum, but maybe geoglossum or similar. So I dig it up and then I get as much dirt off of it as I can. And I'm gonna take some up close photos to document it. So if this was like a regular guild mushroom, I'd be getting a close up photo of the top of the cap, of the gills, of the base. I might cut it in half if it's a, a large mushroom and see if there's any staining, make lots of notes, um, noting odor, noting taste. And that's really as much identifying as I do in the field. I'm, I'm more just documenting. Here's a quick look at some of my favorite finds from the day. This is a great spot. On my way back, I got to ride with Michael Geeky. We had some great chats and he took me on an extra little foraging field trip. The point of mushrooms is to detect that. I was planning another foray in the afternoon, but didn't have time to eat lunch, drop off my specimens and make it back. Honestly, thank goodness I missed it because I was starting to feel exhausted. Don't worry though, I still have seven reasons to procrastinate taking a nap this afternoon. I got to see a lecture from William Padilla Brown on migratory mushroom foraging. Uh, so it's like wide open for anybody to discover what it can do. And me and my friends already drank it, so you're not gonna die. Uh, he gave an amazing lecture and had one of the best vendor booths at the entire conference. Next up, I got to learn about the tuber truffle, and then I still had time for extra mushroom chatter before dinner. See, it has a little bit of a cap, smooth, uh, fertile surface or underside, 
Um, looks kind of like Starium over there. For dinner, Gabe invited me to be an honorary member of the Mushroom Club of Georgia, who was gathering on the back pavilion. I managed not to say A even once, but still somehow stuck out like a sore thumb. Gabe and Emma's farm supplied another giant watermelon, more mushrooms, and all the best vibes. This thing is right. <laughs> <laughs> After dinner, we had our final talk to recap the day. Next year's foray location was announced in Washington, which is close enough to my home to be extremely tempting. Tonight's keynote speaker was Arlene Bissett, the host mycologist for the event and a legend in North American mycology. Her field guides are some of the most widely used and accepted. After a touching final presentation, it's time for my last formal activity, and it's a cool right, one. I'm going on a UV night hike led by Alan Rockefeller. Here, um, this is a Callistosporium, and so you see the gills on this mushroom glow super bright. Some organisms contain fluorescent chemicals that cause them to glow under UV light. This, like many other things this weekend, blew my mind. Now equipped with a nice UV flashlight, I'm excited to explore the woods back home and see what fluorescent wonders I can find. What? Look at that! The final social was a sad one indeed. I had an early flight to catch, but managed to get a few hours of sleep before heading out to the Charlotte airport the next day. Now that I'm back home, I'm fearful I may have caught a fungal infection in my brain. I mean, I can't stop thinking about mushrooms. I'm grateful beyond words for the knowledge I gained this weekend, and I want to share it with anyone who will listen. Before I end off, I want to give an extra special thank you to Tara, who cut her partying short so that she could wake up early and drive me to Charlotte for my flight. She did this on equally short notice as the first time and had a great inconvenience to herself. I also want to thank Gabe and Emma, who sent me back with all the genetics to take my home grows to the next level. I want to thank the Alberta Mycological Society and the North American Mycological Association for this opportunity. Much love to everybody that I met and everybody that has stuck around till now.